Hey, what is up, everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to the continuation of the 30, 30th anniversary of Image Comics. The legendary, the influential, the often misunderstood. <laughs> I don't know. Could go on and on making up nonsense. Um, anyway, dude, we have to do this book. First off, I want to thank Kelsey for yesterday. That was really fun. We went way longer than we planned on. So, uh, you know, it was really, it was worth it, though. It was really cool. We could have actually looked at more art while we were jibber-jabbering. But we did look at a lot of art. But I wanted to do this today for a few reasons. One, I absolutely love Stephen Platt's art. Stefan, Stephen. I've, I've always called him Stephen. I assume that's what it is. I, I have met him. I met him at Extreme one time briefly, saw him. I don't know if I actually talked to him, but I was assisting um, someone up there briefly um, for a couple of months that was um, not not a known pencil there, but a guy named Petty, P-E-D-I, um, who was really good. Actually had a very, very heavily influenced McFarlane style. He was a badass, honestly. I'm um, really, really talented artist. But um, anyway, um, but uh, St Stephen Platt was a big, big deal like a big deal he was one of the superstar young talents one of, honestly one of the biggest really at the time and um you know it, it's he was coming off of a really hot book at marvel moon knight he he was on it and it really blew up for him and he became very popular and of course image had their feelers out for anyone who was uh you know good had an image style per se and um you know was young and hungry, and this dude fit the bill. The only misstep, there's two that is a fan. This is only fan speak now. This is not professional criticism. I'm a fan as much as I'm a professional. Um, I, I do wish that Steven, when he got to Extreme, did more work, and I also wish that he inked himself longer. That's the, the those are my two regrets as a fan. But as a professional, I've been on books that people go, Man, I wish that there was more steampunk. I wish you and Travis would have done more Wildcats. So I get it. Sometimes stuff is out of your control. You're part of a um, small group of people, you know, usually two or three or whatever. But yeah, unfortunately, this is the only book at Image that Steven did that he did 100% himself, and it's very badass. What I did is I actually pulled up a little bit of my favorite Moon Knight art. So we're going to actually dip our toe into his Moon Knight work a little bit. Because I did talk about in, in previous of these image um, sort of uh, books is it is really, really fascinating to find your favorite artists who went to image, not not necessarily the, the core founders, but, but the other people and kind of see what they were up to at Marvel or DC or wherever they were working, you know, might've been Dark Horse or Harris Comics. Um, and, and, um, just kind of get a feel of oh okay so they were they were pretty good and then it's like I said it's always very interesting to see their last book that they did before they went to Image because there's always this part of me that knows that they've they've gotten a phone call and someone Jim Lee or Mark Sylvester or whoever it is is going like hey man you're awesome we're doing this exciting thing you want to come with us and you're like yes <laughs> it was risky though I've talked about this in past videos too. You were burning a bridge that was going to really, at that point in time, close doors for you at, at the companies. Like, if you left Marvel and went to Image Comics, you were done. We, obviously, time tells the full tale, and even the original founders were brought back, like Jim Lee, original founders of Image. Um, a, a few of them ended up ultimately going back to, to Marvel and doing some work. So it didn't, it wasn't like a long standing thing. But anyway, Stephen Platt, it's exciting, it's gritty, it's detailed, it's just fun, fun looking stuff, and um, yeah, it's just, it's, I mean, literally, there's less than six full comic books that he did that he inked himself. He's got like four Moon Knight issues, it's a couple of covers that he did for Moon Knight that he didn't do the interiors, and then a little bit of work at Extreme and this single comic. Now, I wanted to ask you all, though, like some help if you're a big Stephen Platt fan what books have pinups in it from the extreme days that he did because I'm sure that they got him doing pinups and I wasn't sure what comics might have like does brigade number three have have uh maybe a pinup that he did but they're probably spreads if he did them or source book pieces and that kind of thing but I would actually love to hunt down and do like a follow-up 
of Stephen's work and kind of uh, spotlight those pieces because it would be very difficult for me to just randomly look and try to find them. But anyway, so we're going to get into this video right now. I am going to try to keep this 30 minutes and we're going to start off with some Moon Knight and then get into Profit. Profit issue number five. Now, to be clear, too, if you go and you seek this book out, he did, this was part of a mini series or a, uh, like I will call it a finite series that launched the book. So, so he actually did do a number one and number two and maybe even number three issue of a series of Profit, but that's not this series. This series, he did issue five and six. Five is 100% Steven, as far as I know. Six was inked by another person, and they even credit him as finishes. So, anyway, this is the only one that we're going to look at. But I'm going to shut this. We'll come back to this cover when we look at the book, and then let's get into this Moon Knight stuff. So, this is Moon Knight 55. Now, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe this was his introduction into professional comics. Like, this would have been the first thing that you saw of this guy. And I'll tell you what, I wasn't collecting comics at this time, but if I saw this comic book on the shelf in 1990, whatever it was, I would have fell over backwards and then grabbed like six or seven of them and went like, dude, whatever this guy's on, give me three doses of it. Because this is really, really fun and exciting and just a really, really cool piece. Um... You can hunt down a little tiny bit of original art from this book, meaning like scans of his original art online that people have collected over the years. There's not a ton of it, and some of them are, are unfortunately not great scans that the people share, or they're small. But there are there are a few a few gems out there um, that, that you can actually find, like uh, black and white um, versions of this stuff. We could try this really quick just to see. Sometimes I get a little shifty in Photoshop, and I can kind of work some dirty magic. Dirty rich magic, they call it. Dirty rich. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. So we got. Uh oh, the cops are coming. See, they already know I'm doing this. Do you hear them? They're like, "You're busted, rich. You can't remove the color from the book, but I can." All right. So that actually looks pretty badass. I'll make you guys all an artist edition this afternoon. Four hundred dollars. Just PayPal me. It'll all be fine. Uh. All right. You know, the, his inking is so interesting. As someone who's inked for many, many years, I <laughs> I still am not 100% sure how he did it. Like, I don't know how he got such a gritty, like, line. In particular, the paper back then was so good. It was the magic image paper that is, like, legendary. I have a big stack of it that I actually saved for, believe it or not, Blaster Kid. At the time, I didn't know that that's what it was going to be. But that's what I'm going to use it for. But I have probably 60 to 100 pages of um, the really, really kick-ass image board that I've sat on for a long time. Just over a period of time, I would accumulate it. You know, like I'd, I would do a job and there would be four or five sheets left or whatever. And I was just all, I should save this. Someday I'll be a good penciler and I'll appreciate this paper. Because I don't, I don't know why. I just had a, a feeling that it was too good to last. <laughs> and it was. So I have maybe five years worth of different paper that I'll be able to go through, but I'm going to use that stuff for um, parts parts of what I work on. All right, so this is, I think, from the same issue. I wasn't really paying attention, but I just, I grabbed like six or seven pages that I thought were kind of fun and interesting. Now, a lot of this, a lot of this work, to, to be clear, is, is, does look like a brand new penciler, and he was definitely struggling with things, not, not on the pages that I picked particularly but there's there's some there's some stuff that if you actually see the full comics that are ch like they'll make you chuckle and you'll go oh gosh like that that's very weird drawing or kind of a funky funky thing so he was still figuring it out um but uh still really really nice stuff it's exciting you know he was like like the the, the thought was that he was gonna be like the second coming of mcfarlane he could have been, but you can see, like, with this guy right here, how kind of crazy his face got. At some point, I'll try to show, actually, that Petty guy that I was talking about and show you some of his work. Because I have, like, um, I have probably six to ten pages of his art. And, and uh, he was really, really good. Like, he could do McFarlane fucking, like, just spot on. So, it was, a, it was, it was pretty impressive. It's unfortunate that he um, didn't do more comics. But, uh, he was real good. So, yep, this is cool. Cool, cool, cool. 
I'll just we'll look at this one so I don't have to keep going around. So this is this is a double page spread from issue sixty. As far I'm I'm nearly sure. So Stephen did issues fifty five, fifty six, and fifty seven of Moon Knight. Fifty eight and fifty nine have covers by him, but he did not do the interiors. And then issue sixty is his sort of swan song at Marvel. So he was in and out. He hit it and quit it <laughs> like a boss. All right, let's do this one in black and white. I think it's it's black and white worthy. Uh, I'll grab it right back here. Won't be able to take it. Oh, damn it. Yeah, that'll work. Could bleach this out more, but I don't want to. It'll start deteriorating the other stuff. But, um, yeah, you know, I mean, it's just, it's a very, very unique style. I really responded to things like Bill Sienkiewicz, Simon Bisley, Jay Lee, Jim Lee on Death Blow, Stephen Platt on this. Uh, there was a couple of guys that did Chapel that had real gritty styles. It's something that I've always liked. It's got that kind of heavy metal, not heavy metal, the magazine, but just kind of rock and roll, have your balls out swinging in the breeze and you're punching through walls and it's, it's just got a lot of energy and it's just fun, fun looking stuff, big juicy shapes. I, I'm I'm trying to narrow in on a spawn issue and I want to do something probably in the first like 12 issues of spawn but let me know if you guys have a particular spawn issue that you would like to see I was kind of leaning towards I think issues five or eight maybe nine or ten there's some really good stuff I, I've done one before so one although obviously is a legendary issue would be fun to look at something a little further in we could do the billy kincaid story whatever you guys let me know also for savage dragon if you have recommendations because i definitely want to do that the max i mean we're going to hit all the the original creators even for pit let me know which issue and we could do one issue one but uh so anyway, yeah, really, really cool rendering. Again, I'm I never really have been able to crack the code on exactly how he gets his lines so scratchy. Um, I kind of, I mean, I'm only guessing. If Dan Fraga sees this video, Fraga, he could he could maybe um, clue us in. But I'm kind of under the impression that Platt used microns. But I I'm gonna guess that that if he was a big McFarlane fan, there definitely had to be some 102. But like even just look at the exterior of this line on the arm. Let me. I don't know what color my brush has right now. Of course, it's gray. Oh, because I turned the file gray. But even this line here, it's so, like, it's, they're nothing is smooth. Everything is, is like, it looks like the paper is just tearing. So who knows? Maybe to get this style, you're almost better off using, like, shitty paper. Because it, it definitely wasn't slick. And I, I always pictured, like, his Micron was, like, completely smashed. <laughs> But this this looks like brush or quill. I, I mean, you could definitely hand draw, meaning um, sculpt lines like this with a micron, where you just kind of draw like draw the shape and then flick it and get get this look. So it's not that it's impossible. People see a feathery looking line and they assume that everything is like feathered with a brush. It's not an accurate thing. You can get a feather line with just about anything. Anything if you have good control. So again, this is from Moon Knight. Nice. It's nice. She's got pretty muscular arms. We've got the gritty, tough guy face here. You know, I, I wonder, I, it would be interesting to know what, um, like, people that were working in the business thought of this. Because I, I would imagine when this dude showed up, you definitely were like, Ooh, okay, I better, like, get my, get my stuff together. Because if this is what's going down, I need to be going down, too. <laughs> Look at this. Isn't this wild? This is a two-page spread. I'll kind of rotate it. Um, let me do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna grab the marquee and actually lower the saturation on the top a little bit. I tried to level a little bit before I started the video, but um, it was it is tricky because it's was the way it was scanned. It's okay. Then let me lighten the top a little, and then we'll we'll zoom in and really get into the meat and potatoes of this. Yeah, that'll work. It's a little more balanced now. I'm not worried about it matching up completely. I'm going to desaturate the bottom just a tiny bit. It'll be easier to see what he actually drew. There, okay. All right. Uh, so let's rotate this and see what we got going on here. Man, it's so cool. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what the guy's name was that did Chapel, but he had a pretty gritty style. His was a little more sort of Jim Lee death blow, but it definitely had a little bit of this edge. It wasn't Chap Yap, but... What was his name? 
It wasn't Cedric Nocon. <laughs> this is awesome, the, the arm going back here. Let me uh, let me slide. I'm gonna grab this red okay, brush. Let's see if I have a thing. This arm right here is kind of cool with it, like going back. And this, look at this guy. Holy shit. <laughs> this thing is rendered like fuck. <laughs> it's like he drew it, he rendered it, he put more detail on it, and they put more detail. It's just like four passes of detail. And I'm not kidding when I say that. Uh, when I would ink Wills, um, even though Wills wasn't as detailed as this, it, you literally would ink areas multiple times because you would go in and you would do like all the sort of the big shapes. Then you would do the feathering and the hatching. Then you would go in and you would do all the crusty stuff. And then if if there was even more detail, you would go in and do a fourth pass. I mean, that's how you do it. Um, I, I think Finch Finch's tutorial videos have been very helpful to see his process of how he builds it up. Because when we see like a finished David Finch piece, and again, although David doesn't, um, I mean, honestly though, David in the past has done some really psycho um, inks over himself. There's the two pinups in particular that I'm thinking of where where um, he he inked himself and did like a shit ton of detail. But um, you know, it's 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 you build up that structure and form, and you have the lighting on it, and then it's a lot more for, forgiving when you put the detail on it, and you'll you'll be able to. Um, have a more seamless sort of approach it also i think keeps things balanced um, meaning that you don't you know like overwork one area and it's not it doesn't feel like the whole thing this would take a long long time to draw i'm sure his editor was like whoa tom defalco i mentioned him yesterday and that's interesting so this is dedicated to those guys which are some of the og uh, moon knight artists this is just fantastic such a great piece really f fun you know i mean that's the word i always go back to with this stuff is it was fun fun entertaining comics when you got a comic book like this you really were getting a lot of entertainment value out of it it's it's a serious serious thing when i mention this it's like it's just a sentence it's a one of the most key sentences of all this this shit is is when you would buy a book like this, you could go back and look at it again and again and again, and it was exciting, and there was like layers to it and all this thing, and it's it's um, you know, uh, you were able to use your imagination, you were able to engage with what was on the page, um, you were always anticipating the next chunk of it and the progression of it so there was all these all these kind of key elements that made it really exciting and look consistency is important with comic art but you know if someone's getting better and better at each issue that's the kind of inconsistency that i can support you know it's like wow this person's really stretching you know they're they're really going so these these are the covers uh this is one of the covers this is 59 he did not do the interior on this it's not a great scan but uh I'm trying to remember if I ultimately ended up owning these. I, 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 uh, sorry, let me, um, I have all the books that he did the interiors for. The Spider-Man one was expensive. That I remember really kind of having to wait for my moment to get that one because I didn't want to get a beater copy. Um, and then this is another one that he just did the cover. I don't think that I own these two. Um, I don't think they would be too, too hard to get, although who knows, but... It's great little figures here. It's really, really cool. It's kind of got like a little bit of like a Mooka vibe, which honestly, for for this time period, you know, you wouldn't see that too too often. So he may have had an influence that had brought in P. Craig Russell or who knows, something, you know, along the lines. And, you know, we always mention the age of a lot of these artists, how, how um, all things considered young they were to be this, this uh, you know, far along with their drawings but i mean stephen platt probably at this point would have been 22 23 something like that he might have been a little younger but but somewhere in that ballpark we'll say 19 to 23 years old would be my guess so really really far along you know doing some kick-ass kick-ass work so and this is this is profit six that follows the comic that we're going to look at he did not ink the interiors on this and like i said it's credited as finishes to marlo Aquieza. Um, but, uh, from what it looks like, it says that he did the cover himself. I don't, I don't, I think Don's the colorist. Um, but, uh, so anyway, I wanted to throw this one in cause this is in a weird way, kind of his last, 
look at this style because as he had other people ink him like soul saga is really good i like soul saga a lot it came out years after this stuff did um but uh <clears throat> he never he never did more of this that's the like i said that's the fan regret that i have is that i didn't get to see more of this style so all right now let's get into oh, okay and this and this was the one i was saying is it's this is a pretty expensive back issue. It had always been hot. I mean, this is what everyone was waiting for. Is this, this guy was kind of the second coming of McFarlane. And then, you know, you see it firsthand here and you go, oh, okay, yep, he really is, man. This looks like right out of something McFarlane would draw. The Moon Knight is different, but, you know, after Todd, of course. I'm sure even McFarlane probably was, like, raising an eyebrow with this. Uh-oh. What's this all about? I'm trying to remember if... if is Stephen Platt Canadian? He might be Canadian. I could be wrong on that, though. I don't want to guess. This is great. I mean, that, that is just so fun. Yeah, if you hadn't seen it and you knew Todd's amazing stuff and then someone showed you this and you didn't know Stephen Platt or had never heard of these comics, I mean, I would imagine that you would just assume it's Todd. It looks really, really close. It's very cool. So, okay, let's get into Profit. Oh, this is another one. This is kind of like one of those... Um, I talked about these type of pages before with the long, like, thin panels. Like, Wills does it, Jay Lee... Um, I'm definitely going to use it on Blaster Kid, um, but uh, it work. It, it it seems to work for like dark style artists tend to use it. I'm not even sure why. Why do we do it? Why do we do the things that we do? Don't peek. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. These scans are a little dark, unfortunately, but it'll be fine. And we got an Art T Bear a pinup on this one too. All right cover we've already kind of peeked at it but uh yeah look he's like oh my god all the bullets this is what he's thinking <laughs> lots of pregnancy in image books everyone was getting knocked up by bad guys and then there's always the evil <laughs> the evil bad guy who's pulling all the strings and then some bible thumper as you know what i guess that's the template for image books a little bit of religion, a little bit of like unplanned pregnancy, some sort of shifty bad guy, and then a lot of explosions. <laughs> Sign me up. All right, let's do this. So here's the credits. It's always fun to see. So the creator and writer of Profit is Rob Liefeld. Artist Stephen Platt. Colors Byron Talman. Color Seps Extreme. Lettering Kurt Hathaway. Editor Eric Stevenson, Extreme Colors is. Um, I wonder how many of these people are still working in comics. Sherry Liefeld and Matthew Hawkins. I've actually met. I, I'm trying to remember if Matt Hawkins ended up going with Sylvester. Maybe I'm thinking of someone else. And this probably is a Panosian piece because Panosian, I think, started the um, the Prophet series. I could be wrong on that. I didn't really collect Profit. Well, you know what? That's not true. I, I grabbed, I think, the first issue of Profit. I don't think I followed the book until Steven got back on it, though. So anyway, we've got our big Simon Bisley sort of inspired shot. Looks like slain or whatever. It's very, very cool. I, I will say this. I, I think that, unfortunately, they never really figured out how to color this guy, at least on the stuff that he... Um, penciled and inked himself because i don't particularly like the colors on this book i'm sorry if the colorist ever sees it but it's just not my thing um so it's it's like um i i don't know it's just a, it there doesn't seem to be a lot of mood this is a pretty creepy scene and it seems very sort of like literal i'm not a big fan of literal color i like like mood and like like things affecting other things if something's glowing the glow should be affecting the skin there's a little bit of that going on but not not enough for my personal tastes it feels a little more like a c coloring book this is better this is cool I like this actually a lot, and I like the colors too. 
It's funny because he he'll he'll drift into this real cartoony style where it like almost looks like a different person drawing it, just because his other stuff was so pedal to the metal. And he he would do this a lot. He definitely um, struggled a bit with like um, I I talk about this on Patreon a lot for people learning to draw. Do not fucking don't sit and draw heads that you don't put on bodies. It's a really bad habit, and you'll end up with shit like this because you never really were connecting the two when you did thousands of head drawings. So throw on a neck and at least the collarbone or, or the back. There's two artists in particular that I can think of that had a lot of trouble throughout their careers with it. But yeah, I mean, he just doesn't know, he doesn't know how to turn a head on a neck, you know. But he's learning, you know, I mean, it's one of those things. We all have like our weaker spots. I'm going to just shut that so I don't have to keep seeing these things. So let's see this ad really fast. This is a nice drawing. Actually, really, really nice. Who who drew this piece? Does anyone know? It looks really good. You know, very nice drawing. It's a nice, solid, big figure. Okay. And here's an ad for Art's book. Black and white. His hair. Adventure, what does it say? Adventure, look for their action-packed, a black and white adventure. Look for their action-packed three-issue series coming to you in the fall of 94. Only from Image Comics. Who else? Okay. He even got, like, he even got a, like, a, oh, maybe it was a little preview? Maybe there's a preview in here. Oh, look at this. <laughs> My man, Jay Lee. Crazy colors on this. It's like green and pink and blue. Yellow, lello. That, oh man. <laughs> this green is killing me. And the funny thing is, is I actually like this color of green on Jay's stuff in, in um, Namor, but uh, it doesn't have some of the other stuff going on on this piece that make it look weird. But I actually like this like flat, sort of like almost looks like crepe paper green. They used it quite a bit on Namor. Namor, 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 whatever. <clears throat> oh, what is this? Mar 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 Michaels. I mentioned... Uh, oh, well, okay, it wasn't Merritt that I was thinking of. I was thinking of a, another penciler. Um, but uh, Merritt's real good, and he still is working in comics. Look at this. Even the ads were fun. I mean, you just, you were anticipating all this stuff, you know, like, depending on your taste, you'd be like, ooh, okay, like, I'm going to get that, I'm going to get that. You needed a checklist and all kinds of things to do it. All right, here we go. Nazis. I assume they're Nazis. I'm just seeing if they actually statted this. It doesn't look a stat, actually. This is all drawn three different times. Four different times, I mean. Da, 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 da. Pretty cool. I I, I, uh, I wouldn't mind seeing this sequence uh, expanded a little bit. Would have been interesting to have him running around during World War II. The Germans were so... They're, like, so scary. Because it was just so much weird stuff with them they're, they're they're great villains it's like a whole aesthetic with them this is really cool <laughs> oh man that's wild <laughs> it's like this is just like a spotlight coming up from his crotch area. It's lighting everything up. That's weird. It's not as bright as you think when you see it, like out of context. Oh, I'm sampling way more colors. That's why I have my sample thing on like a higher ratio of uh, area. But yeah, it's funny. He's got like that bright light just coming up, lighting, lighting the groin, groinial area. These guys are just having a bad day. Oh, look at this. I'm going to all brighten this up. Let me, I'm going to lower the saturation just a tiny bit. And then I'll hit levels. Let's see if we can pull this a little bit more visible. I want to say that I've seen a black and white scan of this online. 
This is a very, very low res file. I actually like the way he draws this guy. It's like, it's got a little bit of almost like a anime, or yeah, like anime kind of vibe to it. Like I said, at this, at this point in like 93, 95, as all these artists were meeting each other, it was like, you know, your friend at the studio would be like, have you seen, you know, Ghost in the Shell? Have you seen Akira? Or have you seen Domu? Or whatever, Cowboy Bebop, all the stuff that started to bubble up over the next few years. Um, it really, really kind of blew your mind and opened up this whole new, um, just crazy cool stuff. I, I remember I would rent uh, movies from Tower Video and, and they had a, a huge anime section. I probably rented every single movie that they had there um, over a period of like a year or two. Uh, and man, like Record of Lotus Wars and all that stuff. Oh man, such good shit. Still have a bunch here in my office, funny enough. This is a little hard to, to see. This is exciting stuff. Again, it's just it's it's just an incredible shame in my opinion because he he got so good drawing too over the next like year that that um I mean by by 96 he kind of stopped. A lot of these you have to understand they made they, they, these artists made so much money in royalties and stuff like that that if you had if you put your pulled your foot off the gas pedal and and kind of decided to sort of enjoy yourself and spend a little bit of your money and oh hey i don't really need to sweat my bills for the next two years um you know there wasn't a lot of encouragement for that type of personality to to keep working at a crazy pace and you saw it even with the founders silvestri wasn't super super aggressive um with pr production keon same way you know, they missed out on a ton of money not producing more. McFarlane stepped it up, you know, was monthly. And th I am guarantee that probably, who knows how much more he made because of that. This is really, really amazing. Let me, oh, I don't think this will, I won't be able to lighten it too much because there's a lot of dark value, but I'll be able to bring it a little bit. God, this looks right out of fucking death blow. Look at that. Dude. Oh, Nick Manabat is another one. Like Nick Manabat, God, man, I'm doing Nick with with uh, Kelsey though. This this was not really planned. I just was I was I enjoyed doing yesterday's video and felt like um, I wanted to do P Splat. We can always return to Splat and look at um, the Moon Knight issues more. And think, God, that is great. It's interesting too because there's this really nice like cross shape. I don't know if he did it intentionally, but. He, you know what? He probably did because, because I know I've I've seen his Nomon DVD, um, and uh, he talks about composition. He's definitely someone who's real savvy about that, and he went into film. I mean, he's he's a really really talented guy, really really talented and and nice too. I've I talked to him very very briefly online, of maybe ten or fifteen years ago. I asked him a question about I think a uh, what was it a printer or a scanner or something. He had he'd shown something that he had. And I, I was kind of curious about it. And he, he wrote me back. I was really, like, I was happy, you know, because he doesn't really know me. But he's great. I've always been one of my favorite artists. Just so much potential in this stuff. And, God, that is so cool looking. Oh, my God. All right. I got to start to hustle. Oh, God. Well, hold on. I spoke too soon. All right. We're going to lower the saturation just a tiny bit. We're going to brighten this just a tiny bit. Then we're gonna zoom a zoom in. This one I've seen online. This is the piece that I've seen online, and um, uh, someone has the original of this and shared. I don't think a great scan of it, but something kind of good. I'm gonna take the burn tool and kind of see if I can darken this just a tiny bit. But yeah, when I do the video with Kelsey, I'll I'll share it because I I definitely saved it. I've got a splat folder somewhere on an external hard drive that um I definitely saved this uh, piece. So. Fortunately, like I said, these scans aren't so high res, but man, that's just like, you want to learn how to draw exciting comics? Start with this. <laughs> you want grenades. You want bullets. You want bulging muscles. The biggest bodies on the planet Earth. You want shredded material. Shred it up. Did I mention shell casings? <laughs> Splattered blood. I mean, how fortuitous was it that this freaking guy's first and last name 
creates the word splat. I mean, come on. It was destiny for this dude to do this. <laughs> you think comic tropes is going to give you videos like this? No. Of course not. I should have 60,000 views on my freaking videos. And by the way, smash the like right now. God damn it. And comment on the videos. Yesterday's video got two comments. It's pathetic. What are you guys doing? <laughs> some point if, if the channel collapses in on itself we're done i'll just make these videos for myself <laughs> i've actually done videos for myself before to study i haven't done it in a while but uh yeah i'd go over someone's art and kind of break it down and then um just listen to them back when i work but this is that's only child syndrome in in a nutshell as a kid when I was bored, I would play Monopoly by myself, Clue. You have to have a good imagination to pretend like you don't know who's done it. <laughs> Thank God for Dungeons and Dragons. It saved me because then I could actually just start writing stuff that when my friends and I would get together and we could do. But that's like I said, that's that's part of the reason that I got good at art. And that's part of the reasons that I got good at music and writing at a very young age is I didn't have fucking anything to do. My dad was a Vietnam vet who was all fucked up from the war, mentally, and just completely off the rails. Scary. This is really cool. What do we got? See, the, uh, like, it, it's frustrating because, the again, this is like our only chance to have a book of his stuff, and it printed so dark. and the, I mean, the colors aren't bad on this page by any means, but it's just, gosh, I just wish that there was more. So that, like, like for, for as a good example, I mean, Travis and I, um, the two or three of the issues of Wildcats that we did printed really dark. Like, they don't look anything as nice as what the actual comic books, I mean, what the, the original pages look like. But it's it's just the person that was scanning the art at the time didn't know what they were doing. I didn't know, I didn't know it until after I saw the books printed and I was like, what's going on? And and I remember Gar Alex Garner being really, really like hyper proactive on when his art would get scanned. And I didn't really understand why, because it was so new to the business. Um, then as, as I learned more about computers and scanning and all that, I realized that Wildstorm, they would have people in production that would scan original art. And sometimes they weren't very educated in nuance. You know, they knew the pro. They, they knew that oh, well, there's these pre-set up uh, levels and things, and it works for most of the art. But if your art is really different, like Stephen Platt's is very dark, or Travis is very light and little detailed, you have to massage that stuff to really make it print well. This is crazy. This is a very almost like Native American vibe to me. Obviously, <laughs> a little Kirby too. Honestly, not a little, like kind of a lot of Kirby cool oh yeah i saw that the brandon pearson had a pinup in here i thought that that was kind of neat well i don't know where it went or maybe i saw it I don't know. or was that brando i was i would assume that that was keith giffen hmm i don't know maybe i missed it i wasn't paying attention he used this this stat is in the book a lot this one shot of him um in the thing but yeah it's just so dark and i know that the originals look like that but uh yeah, it's one of those things. It's like it's unfortunate that Nick Manabat, that first issue of Cybernary is the same thing. It printed so dark. But I, I'm telling you, it, it's 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 whoever scanned it and leveled it and prepared it for color or the colorist manipulated the line art, um, you know, that, that, that starts the wheels in motion. And then obviously printing, you know, if uh, someone isn't vigilant with um, uh, when, when the sample print print job comes in if they don't pour over with a fine tooth comb uh, you can have some real issues <sighs> a 
luckily I have a ton of experience with that stuff now and I understand how to scan, but when I send Blaster Kit off to the printer, I mean, I want to see examples of what it's going to look like finished from whatever printer I run with and it better look right or it's like, you know, it's going to go right back to them. I have to really put my foot down with that. This is cool. All right, we're going to hustle. Hustle because I got to get to work. 24 pages of Crystal Planet left and I'm done. Blaster Kid will be my only thing that I'm working on, besides YouTube. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's it's I should get there pretty fast. I actually have the full book laid out. I was looking at it last night, and uh, it's definitely not as hard as uh, issue four was in terms of quantity of things to draw. And in fact, there's less panels. It look to me honestly, it looks like the writer was getting tired and just was like, oh, I don't want to write seven and eight panel pages, so I'll just do four and five and three and i was like finally that's how my my endurance though i could have muscled through and done it the way that he did it before <laughs> i won no <laughs> this it's like he got tired of typing big battle four thousand people fighting no it wasn't anything like that do people smoke in comics anymore or do they not do that i don't know I, I, maybe image books people smoke, but I would assume Marvel and DC, they're probably a little gun-shy on having people with, like, cigarettes. Although, who knows? Some of the Batman stuff is pretty dark. Oh, I was like, what is going on? Is this guy growing legs out of his gut? But he's holding another dude. But you can kind of see, like, Steven looks like he's getting a little tired here. <laughs> he's, he's like, oh, God, last page. I'm almost done. I'm telling you, it's a lot of work. And then what's this one? Oh, okay. Cool little vehicle. Maybe like a little bit of apple seed vibe or something like that. All right, we did it. Stephen Platt. I only went seven minutes over my goal, so that's not too bad. But uh, all right, you guys have a great day. I won't be back for a few days. I'm gonna I'm gonna really knuckle down. I need to um, do tighter pencils for 25 pages of this Crystal Planet stuff, so I can get to inking it. And um, that'll take me probably three days to go through the whole book and tighten up everything so that it's ready to ink and then once i start inking it my goal uh, for when i do a page is always to try to do it in a day there's a double page spread that there's no way i'm gonna be able to do it in, a, in two days it, i would i uh, and this is a little tip i can give you is so this double page spread is like a huge war scene it's like something right out of like road warrior or whatever where it's like all the vehicles all the characters they're like like literally like a cavalry charge um, kind of vibe to it and uh what i'm gonna do with that is i'll i'll pencil it all out as much as i need to to go into finished inks but my goal is gonna be to work on that throughout the whole book so instead of actually tackling it all at once what i'm gonna do is like i'll i'll ink or yeah well i'll pencil and ink all the vehicles maybe like in one day and then work on another page and and so that i'm progressing through the book and i'm not getting hung up on like one very complex piece uh and then over a period of say 10 days i'll chip away at it and once it i, I call it smelling blood in the water when when a really complicated piece i i know that i've conquered it meaning that there's just a few hours left i mean a few hours could be five or six hours but if it's a 50 hour piece you know what I mean? Like that's a that's deep water. You you're gonna travel a long way to get to those last five hours, and it can be very complex working through the first twenty five or thirty five hours of something like that. But uh, yeah, once I once I know that I can finish it and kind of one attack, I just go and I I do it. But I do that with books too. I don't. I haven't been real chatty online while I've been working on Crystal Planet, but. I've been tempted to post and be like, oh, I just, you know, did this really hard page or I did this or like I had mentioned, I had a page with, I think, 50 characters on it. And but I had already done two pages before that one that had like 25 characters, another one with like over 30. And it was a tough week. I mean, in that week I drew Jesus Christ. I don't even know how many freaking characters. And uh, but I just want to get it done. No, I don't mean that like in a bad way. I'm just saying like like I'm I'm just so focused on finishing the project that that's the goal. So anyway, all right, you guys have a great day, Stephen Platt. You are a badass Emmer effer, and and still to this day, one of my favorite little moments in comics. I just wish it was longer, and I wish that you did more comic books and inked yourself longer. That's the only regrets. Regrets? I've had a few. 
But then again, <laughs> all right, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great day, and I'll be back, um, I don't know, in probably like five or six days. So go watch Comic Tropes or KFAB later. <laughs>